Good evening, church. I hope you are having an incredible day. I know it's been wet. It's been rainy. Um, you know, praise the Lord. We're here together right now. And I thought it'd be fun for us to just go through uh, 1 Corinthians 15 here. I read this this morning in our reading plan, and, and I thought it'd be just uh, great conversations for us to get started. So get your Bibles out. Turn me to 1 Corinthians 15. I'm reading now the New American Standard, um, but you can follow along in any translation you want. It says here, chapter 15, verse 1 says, Now I... Now, this is Paul talking to the church of Corinth. He says, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which, you all, uh, in which also you stand, by which you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. So we have, here's the gospel that's been presented. He's talking to the church. Here's the gospel that's been presented. You've heard what I've shared. You've heard about who Jesus is. And if you believed... Right? If you believe what, you, what, what I've been teaching you, um, then basically you, you are saved. Then, then we understand that you, you've been saved and, and, and God, will, God will protect you. God will watch over you. God will, has, has covered all your sins and forgave all your sins. He goes on, verse 3, it says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures, and he, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And that, at, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, and that he had appeared to one more than, uh, uh, to, he appeared to, verse 6, and that he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Okay, that means that they had, they had died. Like most of them are still alive, but some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to, un, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. So here's Paul. He's saying, listen, uh, Jesus, we knew that he died. We knew that it was to fulfill scriptures. It says he rose again in three days. That fulfilled scripture. It says then he appeared to Cephas or Peter, right? And then to the 12 disciples. And then to over 500 people. And lastly, he says he appeared to me, Paul. And Paul's saying, listen, I got to meet this man after he w had rose again. Then verse 9 says, for I am the least of the apostles and not fit to be called an apostle. Why? Because I persecuted the church of God. Now remember, we can go back to Acts and we understand that, that uh, Paul was, yeah, he, he becomes, he writes most of the New Testament, right? He's this great apostle. He starts all, the, he started all these churches. God used him in incredible ways. But the very first part of his ministry, we remember that he was actually thinking he was doing the church a favor by going out and, and trying to round up all these Christians. Remember, we can, we can find that back in Acts. And so you just see the humility that Paul has as he continues to teach this gospel and, and love on these people. He says, but verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Praise the Lord. God, God, God knows the potential that, that we have. God sees, he doesn't always see sometimes where we're at. He doesn't, he doesn't look at us like what, the, what we're struggling with now. He says, I know who you're going to become. I know who I designed you to be. You know, praise the Lord for that. I think about... You know, sometimes we look at uh, what we're doing in our lives right now, and maybe you're watching this here, and, and you've got it all figured out. But maybe you're watching this and you're saying, man, I don't know, man. It doesn't seem like I can ever get ahead. I'm, I'm struggling in this area. I'm struggling in this area. I haven't said some nice things. I need to fix this problem. And, and maybe these addictions are, are issues. And, and, and God's like, yeah, but I know who I designed you to be. Paul was taking Christians and actually murdering them. He was rounding them up, humiliating them. He was putting them in prison. And then God had this radical change like, you know what, I'm going to use you. God still wants to use you. God can use you. And it's going to take this radical change. You say, you know what, Lord, fine, I can't do it anymore. Um, and he goes on. He goes on. All right. All right. He goes on. In uh, uh, his grace, verse 10, Toward me did not prove vain, but I labored even more than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God with me. Paul understood that the change that happened in his life, the grace that was given him. See, grace is, is the same we talk about, the unmerited favor of God. And so, you know, Paul had, he's like, man, I was, I, I, I was this bad. <laughs> and, he says, and, and God's grace is what covers it all. Now, you may say, man, I'm only this bad, or I'm not as bad as that person, right? Or that person's really bad, or, you know, that person's almost like a saint. Grace is kind of that, that equalizer that closed out. And so, so Paul understood that this massive amount of grace had been given to him, and he just, he just wanted to pour it back. And, and I think that's probably what made him work 
even even harder in, in his ministry as he just shared the gospel. And he says, verse 11, Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? And here comes the conversation. You know, say, well, well, people can't really raise from the dead. Did you, Jesus, this this guy Jesus, he couldn't die and then then be born, then be raised back up. That's that's impossible. And he says, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. Paul's like, okay, well, if you if you believe that people can't be raised, that there's no power that could raise someone from the dead, well, then then Christ can't be raised either. You can't have it both ways. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith also is in vain. Now here's, here's the key. What is the difference between our faith and religion of, of Jesus, of believing in Christ, and every other religion out there? And we would say, well, it's because Jesus rose from the dead, that he's no longer in the grave. And this is what Paul is saying. He's like, listen, if... If Christ didn't raise from the dead, if he was just a man and, and is still in the grave somewhere, well, you know what? Our faith, our belief that, that we believe Christ can cover our sins, that we believe the only way to heaven is through Christ, well, then if he didn't raise from the dead, our faith really is in vain. The things that we talk about, this word that we're studying, if Christ didn't raise again, then, then all that we're doing is just reading a good book and and coming together to encourage one another on a Sunday morning. And Paul's having the same conversation 2,000 years ago. And he goes on this. He says, moreover, we, uh, verse 15, we are f even found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if, in fact, the dead are not raised. So, so Paul's saying, listen, if, if Christ can't be raised... And we're preaching, hey, that the Almighty God raised Christ, Jesus, His Son, from the from the grave. We say, well, we're teaching a false gospel. Every other religion out there is their God, is their leader, is He alive or dead? This is the difference between our our faith and religion that that we have this relationship with a God who is alive. He goes on. For if the dead are not raised, verse 16, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, listen, your faith is worthless. Which means that if Christ, if Jesus is still dead, everything that we do, everything that I do, I work at the church, right? He says it's worthless. You are still in your sins. And those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. And if we have hoped in Christ in, in this life only, we are, all, we are all of all men most to be pitied. But, but, but. Verse 20, but now Christ has been raised from the dead. He said, listen, if that was true, if Christ didn't raise, and maybe I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it. If Christ hadn't been raised, you're absolutely right. All this that we're doing would be in vain. But... Now Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, and after that those who are Christ at his coming. And then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom, uh, over the kingdom to the God and Father, and when he has abolished all rule and all authority and all power, for he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet." The last enemy will be, will be um, abolished. Uh, that will be abolished is death, for he has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when he says all things are put in subjection, it is evident that he is expected uh, that he is expected who put all things in subjection to him. Um, verse twenty-eight. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself also will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him, so that God may be all in all. And here's where we begin to just realize that, listen, if Christ was dead, absolutely. Everything we're doing, our faith, our beliefs, um, we'd still be living in sin. But because he's alive, because he rose and conquered death, he says, listen, I'm going to begin to put things back in order, to put things back in place. And we can start with sin. And Paul talks about now we have this freedom of sin. Listen, I've conquered death. I'm, we're going we're to put sin back in order. And he talks about everything's going to be put back in subjection. And the last thing that will be in subjection will be death. 
And so it's like we can now be free from our sins. We can come to the Father and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. And he says, listen, I've died uh, on the cross. My blood's already been pay- paid for your sins. That, that the shade of the blood is, is the atonement of sin. Um, it's the covering. It's the washing away. And he says, listen, what you've done in the past, I can forgive you for. Come and follow me. You know, I'm going to encourage you guys to keep reading the rest of this uh, story because, and, and I just want to encourage you kind of with where is your faith and your beliefs? Because we may say, well, man, there's all these different religions out there. Well, you know, these people, they have, they're great, reli- yeah, they're great people. And you know, these people, they do a lot of good works. They're great people. But what makes our faith different is that we have this relationship with Christ who's alive. And the Bible says, Jesus, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through me. Which means that the only way to get to heaven is through Christ. He also says, believe on me and you will be saved. So if we truly believe that Christ is the Lord, it says that then we will be saved and our lives will begin to change. All right. Thank you for spending some time. And let me pray with you, Father. I thank you for each and everyone here, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you've called us. I think that you see us for who we, Lord, who we can be, maybe not who we are or who we were. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving our sins. Lord, thank you for dying on the cross, Lord. Lord, and, and most importantly, raising once again, conquering death. Lord, help us to put things in subjection and in order, Lord, in our lives. Lord, in the areas that each and every one of us struggle with, God, I pray, Lord, that you give us a freedom from those in the mighty name of Jesus. Watch over us this week. Keep us safe. Give us an opportunity to share your love with someone else, Lord. We ask this all in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless. Have a great week, and I hope to see you all on Sunday.